Morning everybody, welcome back to the channel. Unfortunately, the mail lost my recorded package with my winter wheat foliar samples, so we don't have those results yet. I am starting the sap analysis routine on the spring wheats, so I've split the regenerative wheats into two groups. One, the high organic matter, high biology fields. The other group is long-term arable with low organic matter and biology levels. Hopefully you can see the difference in stands between the high biology crop here and the low biology alternative. The theory with sap analysis is you test the old and the young leaves together because some nutrients remain mobile and others are relatively immobile. When comparing old and young leaves, this difference in mobility allows the farmer to understand if a particular nutrient deficiency is a recent or long-term challenge. The reality with U the UK now being outside Europe is there are considerable challenges to posting these samples to Holland. It's advised to take the samples at 9am on a Friday and post them by courier. Hopefully these samples won't get lost. So here we are on the brow of a hill. This is a crop of oats and you can see here the beginning of a lighter patch but actually as we pivot round, sorry about the sun, but as you can see it's, it's quite significant. Now uh, we were wondering about serial cyst nematode here um, however you will also notice this bit a bit better this bit a bit weaker and similarly a bit weaker on the other side um, and we're wondering if this is more to do with depth uh, depth on the drill it looks to me as if this is roughly the strip of a drill um, it's a quirky situation where we are on top of a hill we're right on the crest and I think it was a little bit to do with the tractor sinking back a little bit uh, it's, we were st this was the Claydon still running with the at this point we were still running with the discs and in fact the rest of the field is is, is a fantastic crop of oats really um, so it, it's just a bit of a cautionary tale that possibly we could have gone a little bit deep here but it's not really a case that I have the answers here but the rest of the field is so wonderful that it just raises a question why is this little bit of area not up to performance and really that's something that I feel will be increasingly important before this period of escalating commodities there was a lot of talk about people focusing on the high uh, output areas of their farm taking out the low put areas into environmental schemes but I think that that's kind of an easy option the real reason is to identify why those poor areas are poor and what you can do to bring them back up and really uh, that needs an inquiring mind and that really is the key to regenerative agriculture is to look at your farm and the situations sometimes they're purely by accident why has something happened can I identify it does it give me a lesson that I can apply to the rest of my uh, uh, farm this is one of the things that will make implementation of regenerative agriculture so difficult for farmers as a whole is that you have to apply it to the context of your situation so my farm is going to be very different to your farm for example but there are common lessons but you will need to figure out how they apply to your farm the context of your farm is a, is a very easy principle for Alan Savory to state very difficult for farmers to implement and now that context cannot be um, 
learnt on a piece of paper or there's no formula for delivering it you have to understand it and think it through and really that's what I worry about slightly with agriculture that we've been formula farming for so long that we need to relearn this context element so um, I haven't really got any ideas on this circle here or this um, baled crop um, re reasonably happy that it isn't cereal cyst nematode but I will go to the edge and try and give you another shot and uh, anybody's thoughts would be most appreciated so I'm less than sort of 20 meters from the beginning of the breakdown and this crops a good foot taller it could just be Know, rocky surface but I don't think it is it's something more than that um, it's still pretty uh, pretty stony here chalk hillside just it, we had switched to tines here that was done with a disc opener this has got a tine leading leg on the Claydon but uh, you know I do show you my poor bits just because I film poor stuff doesn't mean all of my crops are poor. Some of these are fantastic. More as a record than anything else. This is the 29th of May and this was one of the fields that we hoed. You can still see, I don't know if you can see it, but we can still see the stripes in it from where we hoed. Um, it is there is black grass in it. I've got a picture here of a black grass patch. So that was where we were just standing, the hole in the hedge here. This is oats next door. On top of that hill is where the patch of uh, disappointment is. Now, this field, uh, this was the other bad black grass field that we hoed. Now, I just want to revisit the reason we're growing oats here the reason we're growing oats spring crop break uh, spring break in the rotation and oat characteristics that grow very fast very tall uh, great weed control but just wanted to dwell on that weed control element so as we pan across very little a bit appearance of difference as far as growth stage or size or anything but on the outside remember we drilled it with the Claydon drill now there's actually that is all black grass in there with the uh, the, the taller leaves being the oats really quite significant now if we go across so the reason i did this outside headland was because um, when it was combined last year i was having an issue with uh, it was late in the evening couldn't get this to go through the combine very well so i switched to the chopper and it had extra tr straw here so I, I was worried about the danger of a hair pinning as you can see this is just a miss here it's a bit of a block culture or something but the weed burden is significant so I was worried about hair pinning as a result we decided to persist with the Claydon and do all the way around this outside rather than just the turning headlands like we normally do so uh, we've got a bit more Claydon uh, in this field in the land work of this field so we'll walk across now to where the moor has planted. Now the benefit is narrower road, row spacings and you'll see the difference in weed control. There you go, dog for scale. Right, as you can see here, narrower, much narrower row spacings. And actually I would say the weed control is significantly better and really, there you go, look at that genuine scale. 
so really that's the point that I'm trying to make we really need to observe our farms as much as possible in a regenerative concept in context to try and understand why things happen it doesn't necessarily and it's not just regenerative it's farming as a whole we observe there are so many uh, different factors involved in the biological system that you establishing cause and effect is very difficult just because a system works in this year if we had a very wet spring it might not work so it's within the context of this year but applying that across your whole farm is is difficult and therefore it's just a, a challenge that I, I think is particularly pertinent to regenerative systems is trying to understand why things have happened can is it repeatable can it be avoided if it was bad uh, rolled out across the farm if it was good trying to understand these these decisions better unfortunately we do have some patches of fumitry as well but we have a treatment with mcpa plant so fingers crossed so 29th of may this is the famous field with the patches you can still see them they're still here but this is a field of flexi wheat and just to recap this was sort of a less than ideal crop of flexi wheat and we came back to it and augmented it by spinning some wheat on and then we just rolled it in it was left a bit um, open by the claydon and then so we thought we could just uh, the seed there was enough voids that the seed would fall in it and I have to say uh, the sort of late the spring element of the flexi wheat has really done its best to catch up with the winter element really you would be hard pressed to tell the sort of month six weeks um, difference in planting date and the crop has certainly filled out much better interestingly the black grass is beginning to show here um, it will be a challenge going forward but this field has always had a bad black grass problem hence why it was in flexi wheat in the first place but i'm quite pleased with uh, the spin on and roll in option it seems to have worked very well and just to recap this is part of the reason for pur purchasing the hoe to address this very this exact problem of how to bury the seed more effectively in a flexi wheat slot if you hit challenging conditions so um, fingers crossed we can do this better in future but it's an improvement and um, another learning experience thank you everybody for watching please give us a thumbs up click on the subscribe button click on the little bell to get notifications of when our next video goes live thank you very much bye